Welcome to Shreveport Connection with Tommy. This video is on your SmackDown results. Try to get AEW Dynamite since it was on Saturday. As well as 205 and WWE Main Event. Birthdays, and this video is for the October, um, August 28th edition of SmackDown, which is also my brother's birthday and a worker, co worker at work. Tatiana. August 27th birthdays, Great Khali, 1972, Sergeant Slaughter, 1948, Jazz, 1973, birthdays from 29th, Stan Hansen, 1949, Kazarni, 1973, Sam Gra Gravwell, uh, uh, August 20th, August of 29th, uh, 1991, and rounding out birthdays for the month of August, Caleb Conley, August 30th. 1983, which is the day I'm doing the video. Uh, numbers have just been released for Dynamite episode, which aired in a different time slot due to the scheduled NBA games on TNT that ended up being canceled due to the boycott. Thursday Dynamite episode drew 813,000 viewers on TNT. Previously reported, NXT, which aired on its usual night, Wednesday night, drew more than that, 824,000 viewers on the network. So, in the viewing of that, NXT beat AEW on total viewership. Topping the audience of Dynamite, 1.4%, according to Showbuzz AEW uh, AEW ranked number 11 in the cable top 150, 40 demographic of 80, uh, 18 to 49. Number 74 in total viewership. New episode of our Truth Game Show, is now live on the WWE Network. Noted before that one of the contestants for this episode was Nia Jax. Other contestants is WWE Intercontinental Champion Jeff Hardy. This is the seventh episode of Truth's Game Show. As seen in a tweet, WWE has announced that Thunderdome registration for this coming Friday's episode of Fox will open tomorrow, uh, actually today. Registration won't be open for long as WWE quickly hit capacity for the first three Thunderdome events this past week. Finn Balor is not typically known for his tattoos, but however his his, his new tattoo may change that. Last year, Baylor, uh, Balor got a matching tattoo with his girlfriend, Spot, uh, Fox Sports host Veronica Ro Rodriguez. A few months later, Balor showed off a new head tattoo, then showed off a dinosaur tattoo on his arm. The dinosaur tattoo now has a new company with ba Balor, revealing that he has gotten three more tattoos on the same area of his arm. He got dandelions, a cactus, and a seagull. He, he revealed them in this link here with the caption, Dinosaur, Dandelion, Cactus, Seagull. In the LED board screen on who was watching SmackDown from another company, Kitty Omega. And you can see it at this link, and also tweet it, and I retweeted it as well. He didn't know it until he seen my tweet. So I posted it to him. Did, did you know that he was that you were shown on SmackDown, making his TV debut? He did that. Yes, he agreed. On SmackDown, a fan noted an image of Kenny can, can Omega made it on there. Likely, Omega was not actually a virtual fan. As the photo was from episode 158 of being the elite at the 11, the 1330 mark in this video link here. Early today on Saturday, Omega had some fun with it on Twitter. I was just trying to have a good time. I honestly didn't think anyone would notice. Omega wrote, speaking of being an elite, the elite can be found at this link. Again, Part of that video, uh, the other video that was show, shown. Well, Omega was kicked out of the elite on this uh, this week's episode. Monday's Raw, this coming Monday's Raw will feature Mayor Ray Mysterio and Seth versus Seth Rollins as the main event. Match will take place the day after Ray and Son Dominic. Mysterio plays Rollins and Murphy in a tag team action 
at payback, which is tonight. Uh, uh, they had a promo for Monday's match, which teases the end of the Rollins versus Mysterio feud. Sami Zayn, Matt Riddle, and Big E have been announced as guests for this week's Talk is Back after SmackDown, airing on the WWE Network, which will be, will be available later on Saturday. Which I'm doing this video on Sunday, so it's already on there. Host, hosted by Caleb Braxton, will be joined by guest host The Miz, the most boring person on TV. WWE continues to tease the Lucha House Party split on SmackDown. Colesso returned on the August 14th SmackDown episode after being out of action for several months. The tension between he and Les Dorado picked up last week and continued on tonight's show as Colesso talked. Down his tag team partner before heading to the ring for a match with SmackDown Tag Team Champions Cesaro. After Kalissa walked off on his way, way to the ring, Cesaro and partner Shisuke Nakamura attacked Dorado and Grand Metallic from behind. They later stopped Nakamura from interfering during the match, but the distraction led to Cesaro rolling Kalissa up out of nowhere uh, for the win. After the match segment, saw the tension growing between the group. Back inside the ring. Also, he should continue on Twitter after the show. Dorado taunted Kalissa and wrote, Good job showing me how it's done, as he said on, on, on SmackDown, at Kalissa WWE. Kalissa responded, Keep on talking that smash at Luchador LD. I told you to stay back. This is the result of you not listening. Paul Heyman returned to WWE TV at the end of the Payback Go Home edition of SmackDown on Fox. And he has aligned himself with Roman Reigns. Remember sometime last year, somebody else stated that uh, Roman Reigns was in the near future to be a Paul Heyman man. And there was a SmackDown storyline that brought Heyman back along with photos and videos. I didn't get the link. In an update, PW Sider reported that Reigns, as the newest Paul Heyman guy, is scheduled to be booked as the top, at the top SmackDown heel going forward. So, possible spoiler that he will win on a pay-per-view backlash tonight. On a related note, it was confirmed that current plans also have Braun Strowman moving forward as a heel permanently. With Reigns and Strowman being, working as heels, the idea of more moving forward is to use WWE Universal Champion The Fiend Bray Wyatt as a baby face, with The Fiend being the top face for the blue brand. Sunday's pay payback main event will see the Fiend, the Fiend defend his title against Reigns and Showman in a no holds barred triple set. Well, what else is a triple set? No rules, anyways. Main event opening video for tonight uh, for the show as it aired at a different time this week. Usual signature, Masafa Ali made his entrance as Byron Saxon and Tom Phillips. Check on commentary. Arturo Ruiz makes his entrance. Main event is the WWE Thunderdome. Is in the WWE Thunderdome now. The first episode of Thunderdome. Main event. Masafa Ali versus Arturo Ruiz. Ali dodges a kick from Ruiz. Strikes Ruiz several times after that. Then drop kicks Ruiz. Ruiz connects with a spot. A spin kick to Ali. Ruiz pins for Ali for, for a, a one count. Ali eventually locks in a cross face on Ruiz. Ruiz gets his foot on the bottom rope to break the hold. Ruiz spikes Ali's neck on the second rope. Runs towards Ali in the corner. Ali moves and Ruiz drives his shoulder into the ring post. Ali goes for the four figure splash off the top turnbuckle. Ruiz rolls out of, the, out of the way and Ali rolls through. Ruiz goes for armbar. Ali rolls him up for a two count. Ruiz briefly locks in a headlock on Ali. Ali kicks him back of the leg of Ruiz. Ali rolls Ruiz up for a three count. Winner of the match, Masaf Ali. The recap of Raw was shown featuring Keith Lee confronting Randy Orton. The recap of Raw was shown featuring Randy Orton defeating Keith Lee following an interference by Drew McIntyre. Recap of Raw was shown featuring Oscar defeating women's tag team champion Sasha Banks in a lumberjack match to retain the title. And then Ricochet and Humberto Carrillo make their each of their free event. 
Humberto, they both lock up. Ricochet locks in a waist lock on Corolla. They exchange waist locks. Ricochet locks in a headlock. Corolla sends, sends it into the ropes. Ricochet hits a hurricane on Corolla. Later in the match, Corolla in, uh, sends it to the turnbuckles. Corolla connects with a missile drop kick on Ricochet. Corolla pins Ricochet for a two count. Corolla goes to the top turnbuckles again. Start, uh, setting up for a moonsault, Ricochet crawls to the ring apron. Corolla jumps down to the apron as well. Ricochet elbow, elbows Corolla in the face. Corolla kicks Ricochet in the face, sending him back to the back into the ring. Corolla goes for a crossbody from up top with the turnbuckles. Ricochet rolls through and pins Corolla for a two count. Ricochet connects again with an axe kick on Corolla. Ricochet recoil finisher on Corolla and pins him. Recap of Raw was shown to close the show, featuring Russian Priest and attacking Ray and Dominic. Mysterio, Wild Murphy, and Seth Rollins watched from the stage as the Russian Priest members were uh, uh, running right past them. They didn't attack Seth or whatever. Smacked on the box office was up with a graphic memory of WB Hall of Famer Bullet Bob, Bob, uh, Bob Armstrong. Who passed away at the age of 80 on Thursday? We go to a video package looking back at WWE SummerSlam main event on Sunday. If you don't know who Bob Armstrong is, the father of uh, Steve Armstrong, who was a WWE referee, also BG James, uh, you remember him from DX member, Road Dog, and already Pat. Previous pass, Brad Armstrong. I right, uh, started off with a video package looking back at SummerSlam main event from Sunday. We saw Roman Reigns return after the Fiend Bray Wyatt won the Universal title from Braun Strowman. Producer Adam Pierce is backstage with several security guards. He tells them to be extra alert tonight. If you see something, say, if you see something, say something. Pierce points to the office door behind him, showing that WWE Chairman and CEO Vince McMahon is in the house tonight. Pierce sends security on their way. Pierce knocks and walks into Vince's office. Pierce tries to fist bump Vince, but he's not interested. Vince says he seems a, a bit nervous, which is normal for the people who come around him. Vince has a mission for Pierce tonight. He even does the, el the social elbow shake. And Vince wasn't even up with that. He hides the no holds barred triple threat at payback. And has Pierce a contract for all of them to sign. He tells per Pierce he needs their signatures on the paper before the night is over. He wants Pierce to start with the Fiend. If he can't find him, try Bray Wyatt. Possibly the Firefly from the front house. Well, Vince pull pulls one of his suits in a cover off the door. Handing it to Pierce to get the job done. Pierce asks him if he's serious. Vince tells Pierce to say hello to Huskins the Pig for him as Vince is apparently a big fan. Pierce then leaves to head out on his mission. We're live from the Thunderdome at the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida, as Michael Cole welcomes us to the show. He chimed in by the tattoo champion of the world, Corey Graves. Virtual fans look on from their seats. We go right to the ring as the new Inter Intercontinental Champion, Jeff Hardy, comes out for the first match of the night. We see how he won the title from AJ Styles last week. Hardy says it's good to be standing in the Thunderdome. After what AJ did to, to his knee last week, he's lucky to be standing anywhere. Jeff goes on and says he's ready to defend tonight. The music interrupts out comes AJ to the stage, dressed in street clothes. AJ asks if this is real. AJ says Hardy is a liar and a cheat. He walks to the stage and says he had a knee injury before he ever went to, to a doctor to get an illegal object on his knee. But Jeff did. AJ was referring to Hardy's using the knee brace to beat him last week as he went for the Styles Clash. AJ said Jeff had a plan all along and knew exactly what he was doing. Jeff knows how to play the system, he says. AJ says the doctor, the same doctor Jeff whined and complained to, now won't clear AJ to compete tonight. And it's all Jeff's fault. Jeff says that sucks for AJ because he was about to issue an open challenge to anyone in the back, except for AJ. AJ yells at Hardy for taking advantage of the system. The referee tries to call him AJ down and yells back that he won't show up. 
Hardy ends up dropping AJ with a right hand. We got a commercial with Hardy standing tall over AJ. In a continental title match, Shinsuke Nakamura accepts the open challenge with Jeff Hardy. Back to the right, SmackDown's tag team champion. Shinsuke was out in the ring with no Cesaro in his corner. Yeah, baby, the Continental Champion Jeff Hardy answered an open challenge. AJ stayed there for commentary. Uh, the bell rings and Hardy takes it to the corner. He backs off as, as the referee counts. Nakamura ends up taking control and working on Hardy's arm. Nakamura's partner, Cesaro, is out of ringside. Hardy turns around and works on Nakamura, focusing on his arm. Cole says Hardy is wearing the knee brace again this week. Nakamura backs Hardy into the ropes and knees him. Nakamura with a headlock now. Nakamura drops Hardy with a shoulder. He runs the ropes, but Hardy launches him. Hardy with more offense and neckbreaker on the mat. Hardy drops an elbow for a two count in the middle of the ring. Nakamura turns around and takes out Hardy's knee. Nakamura keeps Hardy down now, focusing on the hurt knee. The right knee, as most wrestlers are taught how to work on the left knee. Uh, Cole Saw says they asked Cesaro if Nakamura uh, taking the open challenge means he's more ambitious than the, than the two. We see backstage video of Cesaro now. He says he stepped away for one second to get some champagne and come back to Nakamura. Gone. He says no. Nakamura is not more ambitious than him. Maybe more impossible. Cesaro goes on and wishes a sarcastic look. Good luck to his partner. Nakamura kicks Hardy down by working on his leg. Nakamura with kick, big kicks while Hardy is on, on his knees now. Hardy catches a kick and drops Nakamura with a kick of his own to the gut. Hardy stomps and takes Nakamura to the corner. Hardy runs into a knee gut and a knee to the gut. Nakamura places Hardy over a top turnbuckle but misses the high knee. Hardy tries to suplex Nakamura from the apron to the floor. Nakamura counters and brings Hardy back in, inside the ring, but his knee goes out. Jeff closes out Nakamura to the floor, kicks him back, back, back into the now table. Hardy follows and ends up tossing Nakamura over the table into AJ. With a reversal as we go back to commercial. Back for the right, Nakamura has Hardy down in a submission. Focusing on the leg still, AJ is upset as we see how Nakamura was launched into him before the break. Hardy rocks Nakamura after getting back to his feet in the ring now. Hardy charges and drops Nakamura with a forearm. Hardy rallies and hits some of the signature moves, uh, even a mule kick, including the basement drop kick. Hardy with a splash. On, on the map for a two count. They tangle and Nakamura drops Hardy, sending him into, into the corner. Nakamura takes Hardy to the top for a back, a back suplex. Nakamura climbs up, but Hardy knocks him back to the mat. Hardy knows the whisperer to win, and Nakamura goes down. Hardy clutches his knee after the move from the top. Landed wrong. Nakamura charges, but runs into the boots, blocking it. Nakamura slides under the bottom rope. And hits a sliding German suplex. Nakamura goes to up top, hits a flying knee for a two count. Nakamura waits in the corner for the concession for Hardy gets, gets up, but sidesteps. Nakamura blocks a twist of fate. Hardy blocks a the sleeper. They tangle some more, and Hardy hits a twist of fate. Graves and AJ accuse Hardy of using the knee brace again. Hardy goes back to the top and hits the swanton bomb for the pin to retain. After the match, the music hits as Hardy. Takes the title and celebrates. Hardy goes to ringside and taunts AJ at the announce table. Hardy returns to the ring and poses in the corner. Raising the title in the air as we go to replays. Hardy lifts up the ramp as AJ yells at him from the ring, from the ring now, threatening to take the title back. Hardy turns and raises the title in the, title in the air. Music interrupts. Out comes Sami Zayn, making his return, holding his Intercontinental title that he never lost. Sami holds up his Intercontinental title belt that he, that he previously had. Before he mysteriously disappeared, he dances around Jeff and taunts him with, with him, telling him that he is still the champion and it is his is the true one. Sammy says he's the real Intercontinental Champion. They both raise their titles at each, at each other as AJ comes walking up the ramp. Sammy takes advantage of Hardy being distracted and levels him with a halluva kick. Sammy yells at Hardy, calling him a fraud as the crowd boos. AJ comes walking up the stage as Hardy limps to his feet. Sammy has left, left his back. AJ tells Hardy that he will own him soon. Hardy 
Taunts AJ and raises the title again as his music plays. Well, that kind of cheese as a triple threat later on in the future. That way, AJ won't have to pin Hardy to gain the championship. So to come, Firefly Pun House segment, back to commercial. But that could be my spoiler alert prediction. Back for the break, and a happy Sam Zane is walking through the backstage area when Kayla Rexon stops him. She asks him where he's been. Sammy says he's all about righting wrongs and what's wrong with Jeff Hardy walking around claiming to be the, the Intercontinental Ch title holder, as AJ Styles did before. Sammy brags on winning the title back in March and retaining it over Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 36. She asks him why he hasn't been here to defend the title in the last five months. Sammy says he has many reasons, many valid reasons why, and he doesn't need to explain. He goes on about being from Montreal, being a man of the world, and being a true and a continental champion in every sense of the word. He speaks some in French and walks off. Uh, I guess he didn't know the rules. If you can't defend a title in 30 days, you are stripped. Unlike, uh, unless your name is Brock Lesnar. We go to Firefly Fun Channel Health segment with Universal Champion Bray Wyatt. He says he feels like something is missing. And it's the Universal title. He says the title is back and, not, and none of those monsters with big nasty teeth can take it back this time. He changes his tone and gets serious. Telling Roman Reigns that it's good to see him back. He changes the tune again as the doorbell rings in his mailman, Adam Pierce. Wyatt welcomes the postman Pierce, who has the payback contract in his, in his hand. Pierce asks Wyatt to sign the contract for Sunday. He laughs and asks, Why would he sign it? Pierce says, Sometimes there feels like a connection between Wyatt and him. We see flashes of the fiend across the screen. Wyatt agrees to sign and says he hopes Reigns and Braun Strowman know what they're getting into. Wyatt signs and says if he knows him like he thinks he does, he just signed a, c a couple of death warrants. Pierce then leaves as Wyatt laughs. If you've ever watched Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, that segment was just like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. You know, you get the doorbell and Mr. Rogers opens the door and invites people in. I remember Wyatt saying, let me in. And that's what Wyatt said to close the segment. Anyway, goodbye. Uh, now it's hype. The rest of Pierce's mission for tonight. We also get a look at Matt Riddle versus King Corbin. Steve. We go back to the ring. Out comes Matt Riddle. Bill cuts a promo with King Corbin and says he's afraid. He talks about the King's ransom and ends up calling Corbin out for a fight. We got a commercial. And what does everybody know? It's going to be another interruption during the match. Uh, during this thing, again, we get some uh, another episode of Shorty G. Back with the break, Riddle is still in the ring. Cor Corbin has been called out. His music hits and he comes out. Corbin talks trash and says he has hits, but Shorty G just Riddle with a sneak attack as we go to commercial. And then he gets in the ring and Corbin finishes and says he has hits on behalf of G. Bell rings and Shorty G unloads on Matt Riddle, beating him down with him and mounting him, him from behind with more strikes. Riddle comes back with a big suplex for the mat. G blocks another suplex attempt and hits a tiger suplex of his own for a two count. Corbin yells from ringside as Riddle fights back. More back and forth between the two. Riddle ends up getting the easy pin with a bro Derek in the middle of the ring on G. After the match, Riddle stands tall as his music plays. Corbin then hits the ring and they tangle for a minute. But Corbin retreats after ducking a kick. Riddle's music starts back up and he taunts Corbin from the ring. We've got to replace Corbin and Riddle continuing the trash talking. Coleslaw shows us how Miz, Miz and Big E had a heated exchange during last Saturday's return of Talking Smack on the WWE Network. So it did not follow SmackDown last week. We see a video from earlier today with Big E saying he wasn't going to waste his time on Miz on Miz TV tonight, arguing with the Miz and John Morrison. Sheamus joins Miz and Morrison to stand with them, while Heavy Machinery joined Big E to even up the odds. Well, six superstars face off, and Coleslaw announces that they will meet in the ring later on. 
We see Big E and Heavy Machinery backstage. Women's Tag Team Champions appear. Sasha Banks and SmackDown Women's Champion Bailey crack jokes at them before walking off. Back to Marshall. Back to the right. Adam Pearce is knocking on Roman's, Roman's door, but no one answers. We see Caleb stopping him, Corbin and asking if he will now accept Matt Riddle's challenge. It wasn't but a few seconds after uh, between those two segments. Corbin then rants on, rants on about how he's going to destroy Riddle at W Payback on Sunday and prove that he's, he doesn't belong in, the, in his this kingdom of Furious Corbin Walt Hall. We go back to the ring for the next match. As we get the women's tag team champions, Sasha Banks and SmackDown Women's Champion Bailey. Greg Hamilton does the ring introductions. Bailey takes the mic about how this has been a hard week for them. They both had to defend their titles at their single titles at SummerSlam last Sunday, and now they have to defend their tag titles against Shayna Baser. And Nia Jax to pay back this Sunday. She, she gets hyped up and says, but lucky for them, they are the best tag team. She goes on about bragging and they pose with the titles. Bailey knows Banks. It's devastating about losing her women, raw women title. She tries to talk her up and then they take, they then take the blame for the loss, saying it's all her fault. Bailey says she shouldn't, should never let Oscar challenge Banks, but she saw Banks watching her with both of her titles and knew she wanted the same. Banks isn't impressed. Bailey says, but all that, all that is in the past now, and they will move forward. Where the window Sunday, she goes on about how they're stronger together. The title, their title, titles represent more than their friendship. Bailey, on, Bailey says on Sunday, they cannot lose. Banks agrees, but she does the Undertaker look. And just turn your head to the next segment. But, but Banks doesn't want Bailey to worry and says as long as Bailey has her back, they can't they can get through anything together. Banks may not be two belts banks anymore, but she knows who she is and what she she stands for. And they are still best friends. Baser and Jax interrupt from the big screen. They go on about how they both dislike each other, but they hate Banks and Bailey Moore and will team with just about anyone to take their titles. Two, the two sides continue talking trash as Banks cuts a defiant promo about how she will leave Payback with her title and there's not a dang thing that they can do about it. Banks and Bailey stand tall as the music hits. Because I thought that segment was over at that point, but they went to the screen. Adam Pierce backstage looking for Braun Strowman, but so is Drew Glock because he wants payback. Glock walks over to the table and smacks Strowman over the back with a steel chair. Just takes it and Glock walks off. Actually, running off. Strowman turns around to see Pierce saying there with the payback contract. Also, Glock. Uh, left the chair in Pierce's hands. They have words that someone, someone says the only way he's signing the contract is if Pierce gets Gulak in the ring for him right now. Pierce says that sounds like a plan. Someone walks off as we go to commercial. Uh, back from the right, we see SmackDown Women's Tag Team Champions, actually, SmackDown Men's Champions, Cesaro and not Nakamura talking. So has, has a match with Kalissa tonight. But needs to know that they're a team. Sammy Zane walks up and is all smiles and happy about the trio reuniting. But remember, they used to be a faction together. Cesaro and Nakamura aren't so sure. Nakamura says Zane has been gone for months and didn't ever give them a phone call. Sam, Sammy admits he should have been more communicative, communicative, but he's sorry. Cesaro says some things around here actually changed for the better when Sammy was gone. He says that was his plan for them to come together and prove is in their title win. Sammy places the, his other kind of title belt next to their titles and says he is going to hang, hang out 
in the championship lounge. But Cesaro says they were having a conversation as a tag team with Sammy Waite waltz in and they would like to finish the conversation. Sammy asked if they want him to go. And of course, Sammy asked, please. Like, and he's a gentleman. Now Sammy then says, that's that's okay because he actually has to go. He's got so much to do. Drew Glock versus Braun Strowman. About a minute and a half match. We'll go back to the ring uh, as Glock waits as uh, Strowman makes his way out. Strowman marches to the ring in new ring attire. Staring Glock down. We see how Strowman dropped the Universal title to the at SummerSlam. And now the hype. The Fiend versus Strowman versus Roman Reigns at Payback to Sunday. Bell rings as Strowman charges in the corner. He launches Glock across the ring. Strowman continues to dominate with a big splash in the corner. Strowman then pulls Glock into a big right hand to level him again. Strowman with a, a rare senton. Strowman walks away with a big forearm while Glock is down. Strowman then puts Glock back down with a big choke slam. Strowman picks Glock up by his neck and yells at him. Strowman then scoops Glock up and finally hits him back down with a running power slam for an easy win. After the match, music hits. Strowman makes his exit and marches up the ramp. Adam Pierce stops him on the stage and Strowman signs hit the contract for a payback. Strowman shoves the contract back in Pierce's chest as he walks off. It's going to go to replace. We see the Lucha House Party backstage. Calusa says he learned from Lissarato's mistakes with Cesaro last week. He asked Dorado to stay back backstage tonight and not watch how it's done. Calusa walks off as Dorado isn't happy. Neither is Graham Metallic. Cesaro and Vincenzo suddenly attack Dorado and Metallic from behind. As they're not in any locker room, they're in the backstage area. Laying them out, SmackDown tag teams in. The ta uh, tag team champions walk off as a good commercial. Heading to the ring. Back for the break. Calisto is already, uh, already in the ring. We see how he recently returned, but had tension with his Lucha House Party partners last week. Out next comes the SmackDown tag team champions, Cesaro and Shinsuke. Shinsuke is in his corner, though. The bell rings and Cesaro, Cesaro dominates the start. Calisto ends up chaining him to the floor with a head scissors. Calisto flies out and lost Cesaro with a hurricana. Calisto brings it back. In the ring and kicks Cesaro in the head from the apron. Calista flies with a crossbody, but Cesaro catches it and turns it into a back back breaker. Cesaro takes the time with a pin attempt and Calista kicks out at one. More back and forth, back and forth between the two. Calista mounts some offense, but Cesaro drops him and stomps. Calista makes another comeback and drop kicks the knee out. They take it again and Cesaro goes for a power bomb. Calista counters and turns it into a big DDT perk to count. Calista plants Cesaro face first with his head scissors. Cesaro kicks out at two. Calisto yells at Cesaro to bring it. He starts to lose out in the champ for the ring. Lucha! Lucha! As Nakamura looks on, Cesaro box the Salido del Sol, but Calisto comes back and sends him into the second turn bottle. Nakamura gets on the apron, but lets Cesaro and Matat run down and takes, takes him down. Calisto is distracted. By Lance and Metallic beating on Nakamura, which allows Cesaro to roll Calusso up for the win. After the match music hits, Cesaro hits the ramp with Nakamura. Lucha House Party argues in the ring before leaving. Big Man backstage in his office when Adam Pierce walks in with a payback made event contract. He says he has the, the same shoes from the Fiend and Boss Omen, but he keeps knocking on Roman Reigns' door, but he has no luck. Miz goes on and advises Pierce to go knock on Reigns' Rain, door. Not Reigns' door down. Vince talks more about Pierce knocking the door down to get an answer and tells him to go find out by commercial. Back for the break, Big E, Matt Riddle, and Sami Zayn are all announced for Talk is Back on Saturday. I didn't hear Saturday myself. Sammy? I thought I heard what they say after SmackDown. But I guess that's the bomb. I don't even know what night that comes on. Unless that's Monday, Monday night. Kenneth Braxton will host The Miz. Will be a guest host. We go backstage. And we get Tamina Sukkah approaching Nikki Cross. Who has a coffee mug in her hand. Sukkah asks how Alexa Bliss is doing. Bliss shows up. 
and hugs them both. Nikki is glad to see Bliss happy now as a note across his coffee mug is one Bliss gave her recently. Cross points out how she hasn't seen Bliss wear her hair in pink pigtails in a while. She sees how some of the hair is twirled up and says it's not a good idea. Because hmm. she's looking more like uh, Coach Player from Batman. What's your name? Comment in my section to remind me who, who that is. Uh, but it says that she was thinking of doing half a half. Cross says it would, it would look a good way. Look good anyway, but she doesn't think it's a good idea because it reminds her of the fiend. Bliss stares off for a second while hearing the fiend's name, like she's in a zombie mood. About like that. Uh, but snaps out of it and tells Cross to be serious. Bliss goes on about thinking Cross was a good friend, but ends up smashing the coffee out of her hand and says, so much for that, but stare at storms off. John Morrison backstage bragging to the Miz about how hard he can kick. Seamus walks up and he talks strategy for tonight's six man match. Their plan is to not let the others in the ring. But Seamus doesn't like it and tells him to just follow his lead. Seamus walks up and Miz asks Morrison what kind of plan was he thinking of? Thinking of? Well, you gotta be in the match. To get their bell to ring to even have a match. Duh. We go back to the ring. Out first comes heavy machinery. Took her notice. Who is carrying his money in a bank briefcase. And a lunchbox. Big E is out next. They dance on the stage together before heading to the ring. Back to commercial. Back to the ring. Pierce finally finds Roman Reigns in the back. Reigns grabs a contract for the payback match. Event that says he needs to read it first. Pierce agrees and we go back to the ring. As Miz and John Morrison head down the ramp, out next comes Seamus. Morrison starts off with Otis, and they go at it. Otis tries to launch Morrison, but he lands on his feet. Morrison flies, at, flies but runs into Otis, and he goes down. Otis is flashing in the corner. Big E and Tucker tag in for a triple team sequence to Morrison. Tucker covers for a two count, and Seamus breaks it up. Morrison catches across the body from Tucker, but Tucker holds it for a two count. Morrison turns it around and delivers a kick to Tucker against the ropes. Miz tags in and hit a double team gut buster. Miz works Tucker over while he's down. Now, Biggie toss Miz and tries to come through the ropes. Miz focuses on Tucker and tags Morrison back in, holding him while Morrison kick, kicks him in the gut. Morrison keeps the show and knocks Tucker back from the rope for a pin attempt. Morrison grounds Tucker in the middle of the ring. Morrison fights Tucker back into the corner. Tucker fights out and jump. Kick Seamus off the apron. Miz go, also goes down. Tucker fights Morrison off, but Morrison blocks and drop kicks Tucker out of the ring. Seamus charges, but Tucker drop kicks him. Miz charges next, but Tucker boots him into the barrier. Tucker goes right back in the ring, and Morrison goes to attack, but Tucker closes out him. Seamus gets to the timekeeper's area and starts ringing the bell. Appar apparently, to stop the match momentarily, Cole asks him what he's doing. As the match is still going on, Tucker gets back up in control as we return to commercial. Back from the front of the break, Morrison drops Tucker with a kick for a two count. Miz tags in for a double team in the corner. Miz hits the corner, close line, and Morrison follows up with a super kick. Miz covers for a two count. Cole says Pierce is still in Reigns' locker room trying to get him to sign the pay payback contract. Miz grounds Tucker now as Seamus yells to be tagged in. Tucker looks to make a tag after countering him. For countering now, Miz tags Morrison instead of Seamus. Once again, Morrison decks Tucker and counters with a leg free. Morrison mounts Tucker with a strike now. Seamus yells at Morrison for a tag. Morrison keeps his hold and tags in Miz. In for another double team as Seamus looks on. Miz takes Morrison right back to the in for a double team. Tags him back in for a double team. As Morrison springboards in, springboards in with a kick. Biggie and Otis break the pin up. Biggie cheers Tucker on as Seamus tags himself in on Morrison's back. Referee was a shocker as he didn't see the tag with Biggie and Otis. Seamus argues with the referee. Morrison comes back in and Seamus yells out at Cole. 
Morrison gets whipped into, into the ropes, which knocks Sheamus to the floor. Tucker with a hip toss to Morrison. Sheamus throws a bit, a bit of a fit at ringside. Now having words with Miz after taking the top off the turn, off the announce table. Miz asks Sheamus, "What's wrong with that?" Thinking is hurricane. What's wrong with that? Look, Sheamus storms off up the ramp, out and to the back. Angry over not getting tagged in. Big E and Miz finally tagged in at the same time. Big E with two belly to belly suplexes in the middle ring and then a third. Big E runs ropes and hits a black splash in the middle ring. Then Big E rallies the crowd now as we see the virtual fans clapping along at home. New Jay Ross. Uh, Miz counters Big E and hangs him up over the top rope. Miz comes back in and charges for the corner clothesline. But Big E turns it into the Uranagi. Morrison with a big double stomp to the back to make the save. Otis comes in and signs Morrison. Otis takes the shirt off and sets up the caterpillar, dropping the elbow on Morrison. As it was going to be a double, double elbow. But a Miz rolls out of the way. Miz gets right up and drops Otis with a score crushing finale. Big E comes back, back in and immediately hits the beginning on Miz for the pin and the win. After the match, Big E and Heaven Machinery celebrate as the New Day's music hits. We got a replace and the dancing celebrate celebration continues in the ring with all of, with, with those fellas. Adam Pierce back saving the Roman Reigns, who had to pay back main, main event contract. Roman says he is not signing as he wants some changes to the contract made. He guarantees to be be in the match on Sunday and to break everyone. Then Lee. He also guarantees to win back the Universal uh, title, which he says he never lost in the first place. Rain says that is not just a prediction. That is a spoiler. Hmm. Who does that give you a hint of? Well, the camera then rolls to the side, and none other than Paul Heyman sitting down next to Reigns. As Reigns looks up at Pierce, who is now his manager. Heyman leans over Reigns. It says, believe that. It looks like Reigns has hired Heyman for his services. Reigns looks down at the payback contract as the pay, payback go home edition of SmackDown goes off the air. So was it signed with the edition? I don't think it was legal because uh, the changing can't be done after two people have already signed the contract. About 205 Live results. Jo uh, Joseph and Corey Graves welcomes us to another edition of 205 Live this week from the Thunderdome inside the Amway's area, arena. Tahuti Miles makes his way to the ring for the opening contest. As Miles is walking to the ring for a promo he shot from earlier in the day was played, where he says that even as a rookie, he is a superior to, to the veteran in the division. He even refers to himself as a rookie of the year, before challenging anyone on the roster to bring out the best in him. He'll be taking on Brian Kendrick. Joseph says this is his first appearance in five months. Kendrick kicks it, kicks Miles gear before they lock up. Tie up, Kendrick grabs a waist lock. Miles rolls out, reverses the pressure. Miles forces a ha on a hammer lock, but Kendrick brings him to, to, to the mat with a drop toe hold. Miles grabs the ropes to break the hold, and the two, two men re uh, reset. The press arm dragged by Miles. A second, Kendrick forces him into the corner. Miles trips Kendrick and steps over him. This angers Kendrick, who lays in into Miles with a stiff, stiff chop. Standing boot knocks Miles off of his feet. Kendrick brings Miles to the corner and lays him, lays in more chops. Miles responds with some, some of his own. School warrior roll up. Kendrick for two count. Hard hour trip from Miles. The follows up with a drop kick. Pace picks up. Miles talks some trash with Kendrick. Kendrick surprises Miles by catching him in the cradle. Got him. Winner of the match, Kendrick. Afterwards, Kendrick shakes Miles' hand and promises him that he has a massive potential, but that he just needs to stay focused. Cut to commercial for a WWE shop. Back to the break. 
Tony Nese makes his way out to the ring for a second match. Bout. He's taking on Liam Gray, who is already in the ring. Nice nails Gray with a running elbow to take early, the early advantage. Nice asks why Gray is even on, on, the, on the show. Gray connects with a, a few shots, but Nice unloads with a vicious combination before posing for, for the Thunderdome crowd. Nice says Gray into the turnbuckles with a release German suplex. Then hits running Nice for a quick victory. Advertisement plays for WWE Playback Pay Per View. Vic Joseph Joe hyped up this week's NXT on USA. Which will be airing on Tuesday due to the NHL playoffs. Main event time, Ever Rise, Chase Parker with Matt Martell is out next, followed by O'Day Lorcan and Danny Birch. Here we go, Ever Rise versus O'Day Lorcan and Danny Birch. Birch and Lorcan land a double chop, Arthur Martell to open action. Parker tags in and gains control for Ever Rise, but Birch out wrestles him and brings him back to the mat. Parker and Mar Martell isolate Birch away from Lorcan and get the heat on him early on, and utilize quick tags to keep him grounded. Lord Can gets a tag that starts running through Eberize. He takes out Martell with a, a jumping senton. Eberize lands a devastating tag team maneuver, but Lord Can breaks up the pin. Lord Can goes for a superplex, but Parker falls out onto him, and Martell holds, up, uh, holds down his feet. They're about to win, but the referee sees it and calls out the pin. Martell and Parker start yelling at the referee. This gives Burt a chance to throw Martell to the ringside and lock in the cross face on Parker. Parker taps. Orde Lorcan, Danny Birch wins by submission. Birch and Lorcan celebrate as commentary asks whether Eberize will make up a new conspiracy theory. And that's the results for 205 Live. Uh, and let's see if we I can uh, get in time to do your AEW results. I didn't copy the results. Give me a few seconds. Okay. Oh, okay. Special Thursday edition of AEW Dynamite kicks off on TNT with the usual video signature opening package. From there, we we'll shoot. To an update on Cody's uh, uh, screen keeps on flashing. Uh, I'll cut cut the show to an end at this point because I'm running short on time. I don't think I need it done in ten minutes. So. That'll be the end of my results for this video. Stay tuned for AEW Dynamite results as well. Thanks again. See you on the video. If you don't know what you're coming, brother, sisters.